God, I couldn't tell us today. <laughs> I think we're live. We're live. We're live. This afternoon, everybody. Um, sorry for the tiny five-minute delay. Uh, not on Sahir's standards. So, uh, yeah, obviously, women in charge. <laughs> oh, God, I started with the man bashing already. <laughs> I thought we wouldn't be able to get any in with this this topic. But, <laughs> um, yeah, Silla Ladies Live number two. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> you I thought we wouldn't be able to get any in with this. I'm not muted, am I? Yes. No, go on to YouTube and don't mute it. <gasps> can somebody Hi, speak to and see if I can hear them? Uh, sorry, I'm going to need to find out where I can mute. Right, go on to your YouTube channel. You know where you've got your YouTube window open? Go on that and press mute on the video. <laughs> I'll put some hellos while Chili sorts it out. Um, we've got Kelly in, in the chicken, Death by Glamour in. Hello, Sue, you're in as well, surprisingly enough. Hello. Oh, word. Is that Nick on there, Andrea? If no. Oh, no, it's you, Andrea. Hello, Andrea. I, I, I typed that and then I thought, oh, they'll think oh, it's Hello, Sue. <laughs> um, Sorry, where's my mute okay. button? Right, if you go on the video, you know that you can see the live video. Hello. Oh, word. Is that Nick on there, Andrea? Oh, God, it keeps Hello. repeating. Hello, Andrea. Hello, Andrea. You've over the picture. The actual, at the bottom of the picture of you. Is it on the Hangout thing? No, on YouTube. Yeah. Not on YouTube. I'm in the Hangout, and I can see how to completely mute myself. Mute microphone. Ah, it stopped. Have you turned it off? Oh. 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 That's strange. Yeah. So we're not having oh. now. <laughs> huh? Are we oh. okay now? Oh, word. Now I've lost my chat. <laughs> You're doing well, Shelley. Yeah. Clara's going to try and get I'm in. I'm but... chat now. Yeah. I've got the chat here. <laughs> no, I've already said that. You can hear me. Yes. I've just seen a message from Karin saying she, she hasn't been able to get through. The email oh. didn't work. Oh, dear. Oh. Right, apologies, everyone. I'm just uh, going to get the chat back up. But there's no repetition of um, of all of our voices now. No, but if you open YouTube, make sure when it goes on the screen, you know the screen of the video, that you press the mute button at the bottom. Oh, right, yeah, that's what I'm about to do. Mute button at the bottom. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. because I got rid of the video that it did it. Yeah. <laughs> it's the video that's playing back for your speakers. Ah, I can see it. I can see it. Bear with, everyone. <laughs> yeah, bear with. Sorry. <laughs> it's amateur hour. <laughs> After my bit of man bashing. Right, I've found the muty bit now. I'm scared because it's my turn next week and it'll be even worse. <laughs> oh, no, I'm thinking of all my friends. I'm not. I let Nick do it, so I just watch. <laughs> I won't have any idea. I've just popped chat out and I don't know how I did it. Oh, I'd like to pop chat out. Yeah, you, pr you click on the, the three red the three dots at the top and then click on pop out chat. Then you can close down the YouTube and just have the chat up. Yeah, that's what I've got. Pop out chat. I've got it. Now if I go back to a oh word, this is better, isn't it? Although I have no information. Oh, hello. Better? I lost all of your sound then. Oh. Oh. Now I've got it back. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're here, we're here, I've got it. Well, we can hear you. Right, okay, let's go with this then. <clears throat> Only uh, 10 minutes in. Right, yes, yeah, so topic this week is, on Seller Ladies Live number two is niches um, and or specialist areas. Um, thanks to Becca Bamba for suggesting that. Um, and we've got, who have we got today? Sue's Piles of Shame, um, Karen Sells Clothes, Heather the Treasure Pirate, and, oh, my screen's just gone, and Andrea Hills. <laughs> Right. Are we all okay with sound and everything now? Yes, I'm fine. <laughs> Fabulous. God, what a flap. 
Um, okay, so if we start from left to right, start with you, Sue. And um, first question is, um, do you have a niche or specialist area? I think we all know you do. Um, and why? Uh, I don't think I call myself a specialist, but I have a favourite, uh, which would be my toys, mostly preschool or Lego or Playmobil. Uh, I'm just drawn to colourful plastic at 300 yards away and the car boot and uh, it's what I seem to stick to. You can spot them a mile off, you see, and I, uh, I get a chance to play with them. Uh, and I know a fair bit about the bits that I pick up, but I won't say I know a lot about toys in general because others know figures and electronic toys and all that kind of thing. But I think it would be nice to have a niche where you, you know everything there is to know about it. Yeah, to be fair, I think that um, you're selling... Oh, no, am I repeating again? Turn your speaker down. Turn my speaker down. Yeah, turn the speakers down. It shouldn't repeat through so much. Okay. Um, I think you're um, playing, doing yourself a disservice there, Sue, because um, I've seen some of your videos. The stuff that you're doing, like with that, that Sylvanian um, hotel the other day, yeah. I mean, like literally, like oh well, there's a fork missing there. So yeah. <laughs> you will find every bit. You sort of get used to your, your thing, which is why I think a niche is good if you if you can stick to it. I like to do general stuff if I think there's a profit in it as well. But like um, you girls are with your clothes and things, I want to hope to know all these brands and stuff. You know, Heather will talk about them, and Andrea and you, Shelley and Karen, and and I'm like, no, I'll have forgotten that tomorrow. But I suppose it's what you're interested in, isn't it? If you yeah. enjoy playing with toys, yeah. I don't think I had enough when I was little. <laughs> oh, have we lost? Um... No, everyone's still there. Just drop my phone is all. Oh, I thought it'd fallen over. <laughs> no, I've lost Sue a bit. Have you got me? Yeah, I have now. Did everybody else lose sound then? No. Oh. No, you've got gremlins. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, that was something I was going to point out, actually, that um, although, yeah, it's called Nisha's Specialist Areas, none of us are actually professing to be specialists in any, any of these areas. It's just kind of stuff that we're drawn to um, and like, um, like settling for whatever reason. So, um, yeah, Karen, can I ask you the same question? Um, I wouldn't say it's niche, but if you can't tell by my name, yeah, it's clothes. <laughs> Women's clothing, basically. Um, I'm competing you with you, you know, Kelly, for cashmere to say this here, um, the amount of cashmere that I'm picking up. But I'm in it because it's what I can get. It's everywhere around me, and I have no interest at all in electronics. I just, I just don't. Um, and most other stuff is quite overpriced, whereas I think clothes are in such abundance, it's easier to go down the clothing route in some respects. Yeah, yeah, it's certainly readily available, isn't it? Oh. Um, Heather, do you have a niche or specialist area and why? Uh, well, it, it sort of ended up being clothes, and I think it is exactly that thing of that when you can't find something else that you're trying to find, clothes are always there so I mean obviously I've taught myself as much as I can but there's so much more to learn mm. and I, if I knew everything I'd be bored and I don't know everything not by a long shot but I, I can I'll happily take a punt because if I've paid two pounds for something and it feels nice or it looks nice then it's worth it you know and that's how you learn I was so lucky yesterday because I happened to be going to charity shops and I found three pairs three of Salvatore Ferragamo shoes. I've only ever found two pairs of those in the last three years. Um, and a pair of Russell and Bromley um, loafers as well, which will more than pay for my day out. So sh I love shoes, but you, they're more sporadic finding good ones. Clothes, mm. you know, you're going to make, when you're full time like I am, you're trying to make a living. Clothes work for me. I can't do computer games i can't do electronics i i've had a go and i i it just isn't me yeah. <laughs> you know what i bet we all could do all of these things but if, the, if your interest isn't in it then you don't want to learn about it really but that's Sal salvatore for how, i don't know how you say that was it you that's salvatore, salvatore. Very yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I and you know when picking up from you i'll tell you what i picked up today well just before this was a decidual dress <laughs> 
And I only know about that because of you. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll show you. I'll show you all. There we go. Salvatore. Oh. These have basically never been worn. <gasps> wow. Um, I did pay eight pounds for them, but they're leather soles, you see. Leather soles is always a giveaway. Yeah, that's always an indicator, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> So what would they go for then? Or what would you go I'm for? not exactly sure because I only picked them up yesterday, but from eight pounds, I've got to make at least 50 on them. Um, That's worth it. Although there's a pair I want to keep. <laughs> Which are these? Ah. <laughs> uh, nice pointy witchy boots. They're just me. Yeah. Um, they're nice. Yeah, they were six pounds. But yeah, it's... um. It's just trial and error. I mean, I knew they made handbags. I didn't know they made shoes. But if someone works in leather, you kind of know the clues in the, you know, what they do. So, <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, can, can I ask the same question to you? Oh, hang on. Do you know what? We're all moving as we go across the, um, um, to you, Andrea. Nisha's specialist areas. Do you have an EMI? Again, not a specialist or an expert in anything. Um, and again, clothes because... I just ended up doing that. Um, I think I'm drawn to vintage things and sort of vintage homeware and, you know, just anything vintage, really, because I like it. Um, I think what Sue said is really interesting, actually, that um, if you do what you like and you carry on doing it and you learn as you go and um, you almost become an expert in it because you pick up the knowledge as you go. So the more you do of something, the more knowledge you pick up. So, so you didn't go to Wicker University then? <laughs> no, no, did you? <laughs> what, just part-time course? <laughs> you find that, um, you know, you end up, because I've like said, oh, I've got this and I've got that. Then people start messaging you and saying, oh, could you, could you, what is this? And can you help me? And I'm like, oh, um, <laughs> I'm not really an expert. Yeah. I get that. I get a lot of that on Instagram, actually. Yeah, that's I really don't know, honestly. <laughs> Just tell yeah. people to look it up. But yeah, um, but like Nick does all the computer games and media and board games, and I have zero interest in it. You know, we had that game shop for years, and I looked after DVDs and CDs. He looked after the game side of the shop. And I just, you know, people would ask me questions about gaming and I'd have no idea whatsoever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I know, and it's one of those things where I kind of think, God, I know there's money in it. I bet there's, I bet we're all just leaving money on the shelves, you know, in the charity shops and that, but just, yeah, yeah you can't be in it, well, not this, but you can't get into everything, can you? Yeah, if I was doing it on my own, I wouldn't pick it up because I just wouldn't have an interest. Yeah. Yeah, so I, don't, I don't think I'd like to film myself going around a charity shop and stuff because you'd all be screaming, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. Six just made a really good point in the chat, actually. She said, I think that niching really helps when sourcing. It would be impossible to look for every single money-making item at a car boot or a charity shop. And I think that's true. If you looked at every item, how long would it take you to get round? And how much would you miss? because you're going yeah because it's taking you so long especially at a car boot sale yeah yeah i was going to try and say hello actually to whoever's in here but i can only see a smidgen of the chat but i'll try um hello wendy hi kelly hello. oh karen you're in the chat um <laughs> who have we got else here death by glamour sue's in the chat is this nick then in the chat no, oh yeah no, it was me, but he's here. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Peeking by the door. Oh. Oh. Um, and Isaac. Of course, it's slowly moving down. Claire Sheen. Um, moving down. Kath Palmer. Oh, that's, I think, am I up to date? We've got Dean Kettley as well, I can see. I Ooh. think. Oh, yes. Yeah. Lovely. Thanks for joining us. Um, I can't read that. Yeah, what was I going to say about um, niche specialist areas? Um, yeah, so I think by thing is with me, I kind of 
niche specialist areas or things that I'm drawn to, I can pick like one thing up and if I get it for a reasonable price and then I sell it for a, a decent amount, I'm like, right, that's it. That's what I'm looking for now. So I start, I've been, uh, to be honest, I feel like I've been through millions of them in a space of about six months because mm. um, I started off, because at one point, I think, um, if you know Jason reselling from Insta, he, mm. I called him the brass king and he was calling me the paperweight queen because I, I sold a paperweight, I got a paperweight and it sold. And I was like, great, I'm picking up paperweights then. And I've got still got a flipping shelf load of them because I'm like, that's it, paperweights. Everywhere I went, I looked for paperweights. <laughs> and now I'm like trying to get rid of paperweights. The other one is a good seller, but obviously you can't live off paperweights. Um, and then the same probably is gonna happen with the, oh, I think we've all, well, have we all been through the like, oh, I'll do soft toys because they're really easy and they're everywhere and they don't break and I'll, yeah. <laughs> and then you end up with millions of them and they take up loads and loads of room <laughs> and you're like, oh God. Yeah, most of them don't sell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or you yeah, or you get off for not worth your time. So I kind of thought, I'll do soft toys, yeah. And uh, I've done pr pretty much done the same with puzzles. I went through a little pottery face, <laughs> a brass face. <laughs> Okay, you are? I think I'm going through my pottery phase now. A what phase? I think I'm going through my pottery phase now. <laughs> yeah, I spotted you picking up a bit of studio pottery and um, I did sell a few bits, but again, I think it's kind of with something like that, you are waiting quite a while to find the right buyer. Mm. Then, you know, yeah, it's hanging around. Um, and obviously, most recently and possibly partly still in it is Wicker. Um, <laughs> which I need to get out of because it's big and it, it's god live I had it took me about an hour to package three huge bits of wicker and bamboo and something else I think on Monday and, and then I, I was like right have a word with yourself stop this now <laughs> that's why I like clothes They're easy yeah. yeah 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 it was, they, god they are so easy aren't they yeah so um but I think what you were saying about plush is that if you, although you made lots of mistakes with plush, by picking up lots of plush, you probably learned the things that do sell and then the yeah. things that don't. So you know what to look out for in, in the future. So it wasn't a complete disaster. No, I did. I've had a couple of really big wins with plush. I don't know if you saw, I had that big, that Alf that yeah. I got, for, yeah, for 50p, he went for 50 quid. Yeah. Uh, so I look out for Alf's, but yeah, it's uh, and everybody has those big monsters, don't they? But um, yeah, but generally, no, <laughs> I'm not I'm not trawling through those. I think I might have jumped to the next question by accident, actually, because I was meant to be, do you have a niche or specialist area and why? As so I'd say, yeah, it has been wicker, and obviously I pick up a lot of cashmere, um, and that's I guess for obvious reasons that um, you can get it for a reasonable price and you can make a profit out of it. Same, you know, same reason really. A lot of us do it, and the wicker, I guess, was because I enjoy. I enjoy. It's very pretty, and that's why I've fallen down that rabbit hole. But uh, yeah, right. Anyway, moving on. Oh, was anybody keeping an eye on the chat? Yeah, there are some questions. Oh, um, Indy asked, "How do you approach researching your specialist specialist areas? Do you make a point of researching regularly, or just when you see something interesting?" Oh. Um, well, I tend to, you know, you take a punt on something, if you can get it for a reasonable price, and you, like I think Heather, you were saying, if it feels like quality or you think, oh, that's got a leather sole, you, you're going to take it and then you research it that way, don't you? Mm. Um, don't really have anything to add on that. Um, I'm too lazy to go around and literally spend hours, and I'll admit it, spend hours sitting there trolling eBay, trolling fashion magazines to see what's on trend, to see what designs to look for. I do follow a few on Instagram, a few fashion vloggers, because it's kind of like the lazy and the cheats way to see what's on trend. Um, but as for sitting down researching completes and solds, I think if you go into a certain area, whatever that genre, like whatever that area is, whatever that genre or niche is, like with clothing or a with electricals, I think you do get to the point where you can tell its quality by the tag, you can tell its quality by its cut, you can tell its quality by its stitches. Then you look at them and then you may research if it's a high or low. 
Yeah. I like, I like to research as I've picked something up. I might spot something and it looks like a um, tiny little plastic castle thing. And I think, oh, I haven't had one before. And it interests me. And I know I'll remember it once I've looked it up so that it's either worth it or not worth picking up again. And then they've turned yeah. out all right, some of them, and I've got decent money for them. But if I just went into eBay and looked for highest price, whatever, in a category that's sold, I won't remember it. Mm. I'm not really interested in it. I just won't remember it. Mm. Yeah, as Atik says, once you know your niche a little, you should be able to pretty much go on your gut, I think. Can't research yeah. everything. Yeah, quite. Mm. Um, it's hard as well. When if something's like, oh, uh, you know, it's not just a quid or something, it's like a tenner, and you're like, oh, God, should I take a punt on this? Um, yeah, but you have to go with your gut. Uh, you, you, like, you can't be around um, in the charity shop looking everything up. I think Caroline was saying that the other day, wasn't she? Caroline, this is um, yeah. yeah, it just isn't time. There's not enough hours in the day, and and it is sometimes. I just think I like that. Um, it looks good quality. Yeah. I if if I'm not overpaying, then yeah, I'll, I'll grab it and research it when I get home. I think it's far more fun flying by the seat of your pants, which is basically my way of doing everything in life. <laughs> it's, it's just much more fun. When it, yeah, it's proper treasure hunting, isn't it? Yes. I'm finding it helps if something I want to take a punt on, I'm not sure. If it happens to be somewhere around my size and I quite like it, I think, well, I could always keep it. Yeah, I do that as well. Yeah. <laughs> or if it's a homeware item, I think I, I buy it because I like it and I think, well, if it hasn't got any value, I'll just keep it. Yeah. Or you get it and you like it and think, well, I'll just stick it up really high and then that pays off sometimes. Yeah, um, yeah I might have answered the next question myself already but um if we start oh this is confusing start back with sue again um have you got have you got any previous niches that you've dropped i've pretty much stuck to toys i've uh joined forces with clothes because there are a lot of them around but if i can't find toys in a particular car boot or a charity shop i'll then go around again and look for the clothes and shoes and that kind of thing um but they're a bit ad hoc that when they happen or when i see them or i get a bag full of goodies and i think well it's cost me a fiver so it's worth having a go and yeah. looking it up and um, so it's have you enjoyed the clothes that you picked up or has it just been point. To a point, I quite like doing uh, jackets. Um, I hate doing trousers, but sometimes the part and parcel of a suit or something. But uh, I like things that will fit on Dolly, that are going to look nice. You know, fitted jackets and that. You know what I mean? I'll put a bra on her and all sorts to make it fit me. <laughs> do you have any luck with uh, this? Is also off track, but do you have any luck with jack? Like, do you mean like suit jackets? Um, more. That you wouldn't have worn as a business suit but you'd have worn it as a jacket with jeans or yeah. tailored but i mean i had a good diesel one uh, which was a very fitted denim jacket and that one sold for 40 quid and then wow. some sort of fitted marks and spencers little box jackets and things they've been good you know like wool content i had a clean when you get a feel for something and i'll sort of feel down the sleeves on the coats and think oh that feels nice it's got a bit of your cashmere in it <laughs> yeah because i that's another thing that i'm kind of trying to boot out with the coats the jackets um like i've sold a few blazers but literally only the you know the marks and spencers navy blue gold buttons um but the, all the other suit jackets and that i can't flop them well yeah. just not something that i uh, i did try but i dropped uh, and it was hardback books I bought oh. a book. I bought a job lot of books thinking it was going to be a bargain, went and picked it up. They were all sort of coffee table books and they're all sort of stuck under here. I think I saw oh, three yeah. and then it's like, well, I can't even be bothered. <laughs> oh. oh, serious. <laughs> oh, you went all funny then, Sue. Oh. oh, yeah, a bit blocky. I thought it was me. <laughs> um, yeah, because who was I um, uh, on Insta? It was Caroline making lemonade. Um, and she she sells some coffee table books. Um, was it a Jasper Conran, like a home book or something, for good money? And it was on eBay, not on Amazon. So oh. I was kind of like, oh, that's of interest then. But oh, you can get into a right pickle, I think, humping books home because they're blooming heavy, aren't they? Yeah. Um, yeah, I've sold a couple of Stephen Kings, but yeah, 
I can't be asked to get into that. Oh, oh I can do what I like on here, can I? I'm not monetized. <laughs> Um, and uh, Karen, same to you. Have you got any pre uh, previous niches that you've dropped? I wouldn't say, I've, well, um, obviously, before I started recently, I was selling beads, and that was on eBay and Facebook, and that just got completely dropped. Um, oh, yeah. But none of the others I'd say I've completely dropped. Yeah, I do mainly clothing. All my units this side are all clothing. Um, obviously, I've got Grandma Shelf. And then them units, I've got four units there, which are non-clothing. So I'm not only clothing, though I am special well do go more into it but i wouldn't say i wouldn't pick them up again unless it's things i've picked up and they've not made money then i won't pick them up but i wouldn't say i've dropped anything but I'll agree what about the jewelry no huh? you know like you were like picking up quite a lot of uh, job lots of jewelry at one point and did you yeah. say that you were gonna try and drop that if i can get them at a really good price um you can buy some on ebay on auctions there's quite a few shops that do them on auctions like we're talking 50 kilos of bundles of jewelry if i could get them at a really good price i would probably bundle into 10 kit into one kilo bundles and sell like that because the profit oh, margins okay. are there and there's not the work in it but actually selling the individual pieces unless i find something really mm. special i'm not going to pick up jewelry again so no. Because there's just not the money, the margins in it, you know. I mean, it you pick does. it up really cheap, but when you're selling something for a fiver, as yeah. I've learned now, it's not worth it. You know, yeah, you make profit on it, but the amount of, it still takes the same amount of time to photos. And this something, for me, it does anyway, but it's going to make five pounds as it does, so it's going to make 20 pounds. So I'd rather make the 20 pounds rather than the five pounds or take yeah. the 20 rather than the five. And I'll tell you what as well, because what we hear from other people that say, I mean, like Lex knows her jewellery, and mm. so that would be a niche for Lex, but she'll obviously publicize something that's made a, you know, a really good profit or something, or she's picked up and it's gonna go for good money. And that's when I, I come along and go, oh, oh, okay, I'll do jewelry then. <laughs> I'll do brooches then. <laughs> and then I've, you lose time. Cause like we were saying, you can't, you can't look um, everything in the charity shop. And suddenly I found myself looking at brooches <laughs> and necklaces after we've been to Hitchin and I'm like, I can't, after a few weeks, I thought, I can't be doing this because I'm not finding anything special and I'm just wasting my life on it. <laughs> no, yeah. Um, can I ask the same question to you, Heather? Have you got any previous niches that you've dropped? Uh, one I dropped really quickly, like an absolute ton of doo-doo, was retail arbitrage. I know it works for Nick. Uh... <laughs> we all the retail arbitrage, but for me, no. So I, I don't do that at all. It brings me no joy. It make, made me no money. And yeah, so that, that went very early on. Um, but funnily enough, I do tend to browse around a whole charity shop because there are certain things I know will, will sell. So I kind of, um, I do pick up jewellery, but I'm being a bit sneaky because I'm kind of putting it all away, vintage jewellery, obviously, because one day I know I'm not going to want to have great big bloody bags of clothes about. So it's almost like my retirement fund. <laughs> I'm not selling it when I'm old because I'm not. I'm getting old. <laughs> oh, that's quite funny. Squirrelling your nuts away now. I am squirrelling my nuts, um, and they take up a lot less room than clothes. So, in a, as a longer term thing, if I if I ever decide to downsize or I want to release some money quite quickly, I've got that little stash there ready to go. Yeah, I quite like. You know, we talk about piles of shame and that, but. Um, this week I've been a bit tied to the house because the kitchen's been being ripped out and I haven't been able to go far because every time I try and do something, the carpenter's like, oh, what time to do with this? And so I'm like, God, I, and where I went locally, I couldn't find anything. And it, I was like, oh, God, I've, I haven't got a stock of stuff that I could just draw on. And I started to think maybe I need to build up that pile of shame for these, you know, in case you get stuck like that. So it's, it's been a bit, yeah. Um, and can I ask the same to you, Andrea? Yeah, just wanted to say that Nick made a good comment. He said, yeah. I find that the deeper you look into any niche, the more you find there is to learn. There is always so much to learn, it never stops. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I thought that was quite interesting because, uh, yeah, come on. You know, if um, some people say that they just they went around the whole charity shop, couldn't find anything. I went around the whole boot sale, couldn't find anything. But when once you start picking up stuff and learning about it, you know, it's en you know, possibilities are endless, really. Um, yeah, and I think we all proved that in Hitchin, didn't we? That we were all going around the same shops, but we were all finding different things. Yeah, yeah, absolutely.
But anyway, my thing I've dropped is um, children's clothes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because, you know, some people may know or not know that I had a children's clothing shop, which was secondhand. And, um, yeah, I was really into that for a long time, but it didn't do very well on the high street. And um, it doesn't do that well on eBay either. <laughs> and I've learned lots of lessons from that. Mainly it's because the smaller sizes, there's an abundance of it but it doesn't sell because there is an abundance of it. People are giving other people stuff. Um, you can buy it anywhere. You can get it in charity shops, boot sales. It's just yeah. it's endless supply. So what people are looking for are the bigger sizes and the older sizes, but most of that's hard to find because a lot of it is worn out or, you know, they wear it for a lot longer, so it's stained, etc. cetera. Um, and I just couldn't. For, for the shop, I couldn't bring in enough of the older sizes, so there wasn't enough supply for the demand of it. Mm. And now I've come home and started selling all of my stock on eBay, I've realised that it just doesn't sell on eBay either, so, yeah, I've dropped it. I almost fell into the, almost <laughs> fell into the children's clothes as well, <laughs> because I literally hear that somebody else has had success with something, yeah. and it, yeah, this was... Uh, Caroline making lemonade. Did you see her video on um, like the next? It was next, I think. Next yeah, girls' dresses. Exactly next dresses, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. I don't think you can because I've just sold a jewels dress for um, fifteen pounds. That was age nine to ten, and you can if you pick up odd bits here and there. But as a niche, I had to drop it. Yeah, There's, there just isn't the profit in it. That's what I thought until I saw her video, and then I was like, "Right, I'll be in the children's clothes now." Then, and because I was thinking, "Oh, they'll be easier to store because they'll just be little," um, and you know, and chuck it in a poly mailer. Um, yeah, I'm older like, sizes, expensive dresses. Yes, if you see them, pick them up, but mm. but not as a as a whole niche or a whole thing. Yeah, just yeah. Well, I've actually learned some of this stuff because I was selling previously for a charity for a year. And I was just reliant on whatever turned up on my doorstep, like the donations, and it could be sacks of crap, basically. Often I was just like bundling stuff together to try and get some money out of it. Um, and uh, yeah, but no, didn't entirely learn, to be honest. I learned that I can't stand doing Lego. It's got boxes and boxes of that. <laughs> but there you go. Um, actually, I think... Um, Indy might have preempted the next question. Oh, no, was it Indy? Mm -hmm -hmm. No, it was Death by Glamour. If you're listing stuff you're not interested in, and you tend to be lazy with your listing and don't put 100% into your listings, mm -hmm. which is another reason to, yeah, kind of go for what you love and specialise in it, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so the next question was, do you think we need niches? Um, can I ask you, Sue? I don't suppose you need them, no, because you, it depends if you could just have an eye for anything with a profit and you might like variety, uh, you might get bored if it was all toys or clothes or whatever and then you don't put the effort in because I find I struggle with that sometimes. As much as I love them, you can have a day where you think, oh, I can't do another one of them. Um, so if you've got some variety, that's what keeps me going because I can think, oh, toy day today clothing day today, jewellery day tomorrow, you know what I mean? Um, I reckon you can have, have a niche, but I think it's good if you can. If you, I, think, if, I think you've still got a niche, though. I think we, you might just have a handful of them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, generalist. Come on. Generalist works for a lot of people. Yeah. What do you think, Karen? Do you think you need a niche? I think niches have their place and I think if you're a big multi-million pound company that's got a big warehouse, I'm not talking about people that have got lockups, I'm talking mahoosive warehouse, I can see why a niche would be good because you've got one of the anchor shops, you're selling hundreds of thousands each week and you will get repeat custom. I think in the second hand market so much, I don't think we need them. I think they're quite valuable, especially when you first start out. Because, like, I mean, you all know, you know, I was buying in sacks of clothing. And, yeah, I was, I've was made profit every month. And I've always said that. I always said that when I gave them up. I said I still made profit on them. Not great profit, but I still made profit. But I learned so much doing them. So I think if you do niche a bit to start off with in an area, 
you can learn that area a lot about that area whereas i think if you go in now and as soon as you start you're i'm gonna have one of these one of these one of these one of these how much are you actually going to really learn about an area does that make sense yeah um actually that sort of leads on to another question do you think like you're saying like people it might be useful if you have a big warehouse and a big like some people think well my shop my ebay shop is all about clothes um so if i'm going to sell i think pound curl does one because she does her vintage furniture and um collectibles and i think was she getting into clothes and she thought well i need to do that on a different shop then and i, I don't i don't know if you do or not because of you know like well see i haven't got a fo it's like a following like she would have who are coming back for particular furniture and maybe if her next top pop popped up in there with the sideboards they might go what but then on eBay, don't you think people, people, you know, they'll just search not necessarily through your shop anyway? I think consumables, they will search for, they will go to specialist shops. Like before I was selling the beads, I used to make jewellery. I'd done it basically fight depression when my kids were younger. Um, it was something for me to do. It's me to take time out. And I used to hand make jewellery. And I used to only ever go to two shops on eBay because I knew they're quality was good and I knew their service was good and I actually had them shop safe so I'd go back time and time again mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you go and buy a pair of jeans from eBay you're going to think I'm only going to buy from that seller especially with how we find items you know I think I don't know maybe what's her name you know at Leanne the one that's us that's got the warehouse just open to shop unit or whatever oh, yeah. I think she may have a following because of the way she her business model works because she does a lot of auctions as well doesn't she and she's very me i'll do clothing that's meant for a little skinny mini 16 year old and i'll do clothing for a plus size 50 whatever you know 60 year old you know i'm not i'm not saying i'm only going to do clothing for that little area you know i my shop would be no good on something like depop because i just haven't got enough of the trendy stuff that and the labels that the kids want is Depop like reliant on you um, going back to the same people or people and you who know or something? It's very um, social media based, so it's yeah. all about sort of getting to know people and you know promoting with hashtags and all of that. God, who wants to do that? <laughs> yeah, I've tried it, but I've had no success. <laughs> I'm too old, I think. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, we Heather, um, do you think we need niches? And well, it, like you say, it's useful to learn. It's useful to learn about certain areas. I do sneakily pick up bits of pottery, and I'm a magpie. So if I see something that catches my eye, I like to take it away and research it. And I'd love to know a lot more and make that a niche. But there's a lot of people that know a lot more than me, and I'm still dabbling about with it. Um, in clothes, again, much like Cameron was saying, I, I sell anything really from something for someone yeah. very young to something for someone much older or anyone in between i do have certain niches i tend to have a real thing for military jackets partly because i love them <laughs> you know and i do like there's certain sort of goth items that i know are going to go well because i know people who wear those things of every age um so yeah there's a usefulness in, in niches particularly when you've got to narrow down what you're going to learn about you can't do everything yeah but the way i am i do like to learn about everything that's me if i see something and i know it goes for money i will spot it across the charity shop that's just me <laughs> we've been out with you when you've done that. Really <laughs> oh that's coming home with me <laughs> yeah but that's me i'm everyone works in different ways and i think it can be a bit overwhelming to try and look for everything particularly when you're starting out <laughs> yeah yeah. I think like Karen said as well, you've got to look at the sourcing side of it as well, because if you do want to have a particular niche, like if you only want to sell silverware or you only want to sell a certain, you know, China tea sets or something um, or one particular style of jacket, you've got to have different sourcing avenues for it. Whereas if you're a generalist, you can think right i'm out to one car boot and 10 charity shops and whatever they've got i'll take it and that's it so you're not going in blinkered mm. whereas you might have to go a lot further afield if you're only wanting to buy silverware or do online auctions or you know yeah 
I, I also agree with what Karen was saying is that I think the way people shop on eBay is if I want a, a long black maxi skirt that's got ruching on it, that's what I'm going to search for. I don't actually care what shop it comes from. Um, and I don't necessarily assume they're going to have more of the same sort of thing. Very rarely do I want to browse someone's shop, especially if it's, they've got a lot of things listed. Um, so, yeah, I don't think there is a customer loyalty thing. I, you can monitor your amount of repeat purchases um, somewhere in the eBay yeah. thing. But to be fair, there's so little of that. It doesn't apply to me. I don't feel it does. So I, I, I don't feel the need to build a brand or a pretty shop or any of that shit. I just need to get my shizzle listed yeah. and get it sold. Do you want it or not? <laughs> Please buy it and don't cancel. Don't cancel the tarot cards when you paid me £175 for them and then cancel on me this morning when I wake up. Thank oh. you. <laughs> God, yes. Yeah. If you see these out and about, pick them up <laughs> they're worth a lot of money oh there we go are those those quite vintage ones these are these are from 1977 yes but i mean again that's sort of a specialist area for me because i know about tarot yeah <laughs> but and a lot of charity shops would rather they were out of their shop very very quickly oh that's interesting yeah i don't like them it spooks them so i'm like yes yeah, didn't you have some Karen as well yeah i've got the mind of heaven when i meet up with her oh right <laughs> I don't like them. Oh, cool. <laughs> okay, I'll put that to bed then. I want to pick them up. <laughs> um, Andrea, do you think we need niches? I don't think we need them, no. Um, I think, sorry, go on. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, we've been doing it for 17 years and we've been between us generalist sellers. Um, our store, we just have one store, we throw everything on it. And um, it, it works for us. So I don't think you need it. I think there is some merit to having, you know, if I've had this conversation with Nick. Should I have a separate store just for clothing? Would that make, would that bring in repeat custom? Would that sell more clothes? And I don't know. I back, I'm back and forth on it. But I, I think I do agree that I don't shop that way either. I'm, I don't shop looking at just one person's store. I search for an item, not within a shop so I haven't done it and we've still got one shop yeah because actually if anybody was I mean I'm sure we've all got people that subscribe to our shops but like obviously when the car parts came in if anybody was subscribed to a shop and looking at oh look they got in there this week I wonder if they've got any wick and that's all the car parts <laughs> but it hasn't put off trade does it really I know so that's um, I, I do think I mean I never go down the shop route the two shop route just to get my clothing separate i mean i'm looking at decreasing my listings so what i'm about to say is neither relevant at the moment but when we move and that is when i'll probably even kick it up even higher but with a different business model i may consider two shops if it works out financially cheaper that is i think that's the only time i've considered two shops because that hike at the moment between feature and anchor is such a big hike. I think if it was going to work out cheaper for me to have a feature and a basic, I would yeah. probably be separate doing the clothing on the feature and the base would be the other one. But that's the only time I'd even consider separating it. Um, Fate Rachel did that, I think. They got full on one shop and the, the next step, step up's mental, isn't it? The mm. uh, like hundreds a month. Um, and she did the two. I think the only trick is, is having to monitor two shops. I bet that gets confusing. Mm. Um, yeah. Oh, I was just looking at the chat. Where have we got to? Yeah. Got some questions here. Oh, can you, uh... Right. Owls Attic said, are you ladies mostly listing clothing £15 plus? I'm not picking up anything under that anymore as it's not worth the time. What are your price point minimums? Um, yeah, I'm trying to do that as well, to be honest. Um, I did go through a little, I did, <laughs> I put my goals, uh, monthly goals on Insta and I go through like, right, this month I will only be picking stuff up that I can sell for at least £20. Um, and then, of course, you're just, or you, you take a punt on something and you can't sell it for 20 quid, or, you know, it wasn't, that stuff wasn't available in the charity shop. And I don't know whether, I don't know whether, how selective to be, whether to say, right, well, I'm not going to waste my time on the stuff that's worth less. Um, you know, if, if they're, and come out with nothing it's tricky to like or think well there's a few bits there i could put on for a tenner or i come with nothing today not really sure um what do you think 
Should we go through? Uh, where are we, Sue? Um, I don't do as many clothing items as you uh, lot do, I don't think, but I always charge separately for postage. So if I've yeah. got a bag full of clothes, I would sooner put a top on for a fiver because it's hang it on a, you know, I don't put all the effort into getting it on dolly and this, that and the other, but if it's just hang it on a coat hanger and take five photos and upload it when you're doing multi uh, listing, you know, listing a load at the same time, then a fiver for each one, I'd sooner do that than, than get rid of it. Um, obviously, if I can get coats or jackets or tailored items so I can be generating 20 to 30 pound, yeah that's good i might buy those as individual items and i've been looking to find some of those in the bags that i've bought uh, so they've cost me next to nothing cost me pennies but i will still list something that's only a fiver because i charge separate for postage and it's so easy to post it's a damn sight easier to post than the sylvanian family hotel which you know 15 um items could sell for the same price as a sylvanian house with a load of bits and bobs that load of cleaning and setting up and packaging and I can shove them in a the bag so mm. I don't mind lower value it just takes through now and again and I've got space you see I think it depends if you've got space yeah that's the other thing and if it turns over quick then like if I was listing it all day long and it was all selling tomorrow then yeah I could cope with it um, but it's when you it keeps coming around and you have to keep relisting it and make a decision about it and and it's not worth much it's like oh gee it's taking up my time i think if you're stuck on space i think you need to be trying to generate as much as you can for the space you've got yeah um, mine just goes up the loft it's fine yeah i was in the garage the other week kind of thinking i was looking at some shelves and um a lady that I used, to know, used to talk about um prime real estate space they're like my shelves i could get to easily that's my prime real estate and if i've just got if i filled up already with all my lower value stuff then i'm not i'm not using the space available to the you know the best i can i guess um karen we just had a big change on yours haven't you yeah i mean i used to list anything from 2.99 upwards um and that would be the starting price um now it's hard if I was to go to a charity shop or I was to go to a boot sale and it would cost me a pound or more, it would not be listed for less than 15. Does that mean it would sell for 15? Not necessarily, but that would be my start, my minimum starting price that I would try to sell it at. If I was to go to a, a bag still or a jumble sale and pick things up free for a pound or the whole bags I get for a pound when I go to the filler bag, I might be inclined for more than 10, even eight quid because my business model now is going to be to have constant auctions running. And they them items there that have cost me pennies are going to be my auctions. Because I do find having auctions running keeps the mentality of your stock going. Mm. Your stock going. Now, I don't do 99p auctions. I start it at my buy it now price. And they don't always sell, but I do find that they help with my how many um, impressions and that I get on my shop and how many views I get on it. Oh, wow. Oh, so you look at impressions and views because I was just wondering how you knew. <laughs> so I'm looking at impressions and views. Mm. I don't I don't get that down into that detail. And what do you think, Heather? Are you, are we, you're, you're high, aren't you? Well, I, I try to be. Um, it doesn't mean that stuff always moves and there are things that I pick up that aren't worth a great deal, but I'll still let them go. Um, I try to sell, I do try and sell the item for what I think it's actually worth um but yeah i've got to be flexible because now i have got i'd say i've got probably a bit more stock than i need so i think i'm actually considering now doing some auctions because i've kind of held off doing auctions because they seem like a bit of a faddle um but if it's going to activate my store some more then i what i might do is some of my older stuff just actually start it up lower but to, to move it and get it gone um, there's enough stock out there for me. I, I as a, being a generalist and being a clothes person, I'm never going to run out of stock. <laughs> so, How long yeah. will you hold on to something for before? Well, I suppose you, say you haven't done auctions before. Have you just been hanging on to stuff for like forever? Or? Yeah, well, sort of. I mean, it is amazing that you go through periods when a whole bunch of stuff will sell and it's quite old stock for no apparent reason. So I'm not sure that just cutting everything to the bone or is is always necessary i just think that ebay has periods of high activity for me and periods when it's gone 
Yeah. And there doesn't really doesn't seem to be much logic. You just have to plow on regardless and look at the bigger picture of, well, at least this year I know I've made more money than I made last year and try and not take it personally. Yeah. <coughs> It's hard, isn't it? It's hard not to when you're <coughs> <Karen God. coughs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Andrew? You got to, like minimum price points? Um, probably. I've, there's one or two very old bits that from way, way back that are on for less, but I'm not going to let anything go for less than sort of twelve ninety nine. <laughs> I think I yeah I aspire to what you're doing. <laughs> what about you, Andrea? Yeah, well, I'm a really slow lister, so I'm realising I'm, I'm needing to pick up things with a higher profit margin now because it just takes me so long to list everything. So it makes more sense to have higher value things. But um, in terms of what we do together, I mean, you know, we, we sourced um, a load of Christmas CDs a couple of years ago. We paid um, up to 10p each on them. And we're selling them for 2 99 but they're selling so quickly and they're really easy to package so it's kind of swings and yeah. roundabouts i think like nick just said actually that if if it's easy to package it sells quickly then it doesn't matter if it's a low a low value and a low profit margin so yeah i also think if you've got multiples of that item because that's just one listing you've got to generate you know if you've got multiple say you've got 20 of them you're not going to mind only making two three pound profit on the item because you've got 20 of them so you're going to make the more profit than with one individual item. Does that make sense? Especially if they're really easy to package and shove in a jiffy bag. Yeah. Yeah. Um, trying to read the chat. I'm being a bit rubbish with the chat, sorry. Um, actually, so we've got one more question. Mm. Could be an interesting question. Um, Sue, <laughs> have you got any niches that you'd like to get into? Yeah, China. Oh, China ornaments, pottery. Yeah, I'd love to because I, I can. There's so many shelves of it in the charity shops, and I look at it and I think that looks interesting, but I've no idea if it's a 99p thing or a yeah, rare hundred year old, you know, antique bird or whatever it is. And I look at it, and I can see odd things that I remember that mum might have had in the china cabinet, like a Hummels and a Ladros and a, things like that. But general, uh, the people that sell, I mean, uh, Steve Green has some stuff in his china shop and, uh, and his teapot shelf and all that. And I think, how did you know that that little tiny dish about this big is going to get him like 20 quid? And think. But I'd have to write names of brands down and then i'd forget to set a list with me and you know yeah if you can get it cheap you can research it can't you yeah but would you you want you're not put off by i mean what is stopping you then from getting into the ceramics uh i suppose i don't go out sourcing very often because I'm very good with my little honey hole charity shop and the car boots that I go to. And I tend to build stock in the summer so that I can use it in the winter. So I'm not always outsourcing because I'm a slow lister, like Andrea said. I, I could make a lot more money if I could list a lot quicker. Um, but I think when I'm out, I'll go with just of a view to, I'm going to pick up a few things today. That's enough for today. Because otherwise my piles will just get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and I keep thinking, if I clear all this lot, then I'll have a go at it. But I never actually clear all this lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's the packaging as well, isn't it? It's with uh, the pottery and, and stuff. Also the thing is that I know myself and I know I won't remember stuff. But you, you're organising your lists, aren't you? Yeah, but I'd lose my list, you see. I forget. <laughs> um. Karen, have you, have you got an area that you'd like to get into? I'd like to get bigger in that, but it's space factor. I can't do it. Like all retro, vintage, kitsch stuff, I'd love to really go into it. Just because I find it really fun sourcing it. But I, part of me does think that if I went into it bigger, along this would be along with the clothing, because I think that is very hit and miss as to when it sells and what sells. Um, but if I was to go into that bigger, I'd need more space. 
and would the fun and the enjoyment I get from going out sourcing it go if I was having to go and look for it? Do you know what I mean? Because this is like fun for me now, Grandma Shelf. It's just fun. Yeah, you enjoy it. My stuff said it enough of it. Mm, yeah, I have to fill gaps. <laughs> but it's yeah, it's bulky, isn't it? Mm. Um, I mean, the stuff that um, Pound Girl sells, I've ever seen her, like sideboards and stuff, and then she yeah. posts humongous mirrors and hats off to her, yeah. And that's, that's another thing you've got to think about, you know. I mean, it's like, it's okay for me to turn the top that's cost me £2 into, and sell it for £12. Okay, that's not a great profit margin. But how long does it take me to post? Whereas if I was to get a bit of china that's going to cost me £2 and I'm going to sell it for 12 because I don't do it a lot, it takes me forever to package up China and that. You know, I bubble wrap it, I cardboard that, I then re-bubble wrap it, then I re-cardboard that. By the end of it, it's like this by this for a dish like this, because I don't want it breaking. I'm the same. I think I possibly over-package stuff and I'm wasting my time, but yeah. Um, what do you think, Heather? Is there anything you'd like to get into? Well, when I first started eBaying, my, my big thing was, was mid-century modern furniture. Oh. Um, very, well a comparatively small house here um so that really doesn't work and the one time i had a delivery of i think it was 46 chairs dining chairs they were everywhere the whole fucking house the whole house was full of them <laughs> you're all right I had chairs coming out my ears now i've got eight of them that we use as dining chairs now but they made me thousands but the thing is with big stuff like that not only is it the space it's transporting it and um and finding it finding clothes is easy I can find clothes every day of the week, no problem. But to come across a mother load of decent mid-century furniture, especially right. now that it's become incredibly hot, um, is almost impossible. So much as I'd like to do that, I kind of, I've backed out of that because right. I couldn't keep doing that to our house, having it rammed full of stuff that is never going, you know, it's going to take time to sell. Um, what I do want to get into and what I'm learning about is, is jewellery, especially vintage jewellery, because I can spot silver a mile off. I know what real pearls look like. Um, I've, I've got an eye for jewellery. I know that. So I, that's like that area. And then really also uh, the pottery, the grandma, the, the kitschy stuff, because I'm old enough to, to have remembered this stuff <laughs> the first time around. Um, and I, I do know certain brands. I've been lucky where I've gone into a charity shop and I've just gone, oh, there's something about that. I'll, I'll buy it because I quite like it. It's funky. And then I've looked it up and found out that it is actually something. So I've got a little backlog of certain things that I will look out for that are, to me are completely unmistakable. But mm. yeah, I want to learn more because the thing is I like learning. I get really bored if I'm not always learning. It's always been my downfall, but in reseller life, it's a good thing. Yeah. So I'm happy if I'm learning. I do need a bit of variety. It gets boring otherwise, doesn't it? I think Kath Palmer just said something for you, Sue. You need to make screenshots of memorable, memorable stuff on your phone and then you can refer to it when you're out. I should do that. That would be brilliant. But yes. then I know I'd probably forget I'd taken screenshots. <laughs> <laughs> Sam like it's a wonder I can actually make my way home in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yeah, Andrea, are there any niches you'd like to get into? Um, I'm really enjoying picking up 35 millimeter cameras. Um, yeah, so something like that along the photography line. Yeah, so you've got a background in is your degree in photography or? I have a degree in photography and film. So you're sorted for knowing about cameras then? Yeah, well, not really, but <laughs> um, yeah, it's been a long time. But Ellen's doing a, an A-level in photography now, so it's kind of reignited that spark a little bit. <laughs> yeah because i would uh, that's actually something i would love to get into cameras as well they're good money but they're you know they're prolific i think don't you think everywhere you go car boots and that there are people with tons of them i see yeah, them as you do stuff. have to know what you're looking for a little bit exactly. um, yeah we've got a little bit of knowledge of you know what to leave there and what to pick out well, we're all trying to find the Mew too, aren't we? That famous oh, yeah. thing of, of yeah. and we actually have one. And I daren't sell it because my luck with electronics is zilch and I wouldn't want to return. So I've still got it sitting there. For oh, no, you've got a Mew too? Yeah, I found one, yeah. Oh, just... Well, pop some batteries in it. Just pop some batteries in it, check it's clear, check the little lights are coming on when you press That's what I do, pressing the yeah. buttons. 
I, I will I will get it on before Christmas, but it's kind of like, oh, <laughs> I'm nervous for anything electronic. <laughs> oh, no, I've sent, no, you're, because I've had somebody message me before and say, when you say it's tested, to what degree have you tested it? Like, have you, have you actually uh, taken a picture and had it developed or whatever? And so then I can say, this is what I've done, you know. And uh, it's worked out right. how you've tested it, if you're worried about it, just say, I've put batteries in, the light's come on, you know, I've made sure the window's yeah. clear and it is tested to that level. Yeah, yeah, yes, I, I must do that. So, yes, kick up the arse there. I must get on with it. <laughs> Let me just ask the question. Packaging can be a big time drain. Not when you do clothing, Nick. Do you guys enjoy doing it or is it a chore? Don't like doing it, Heather. No, -uh. no I, I'll do it and, and I'll package properly. And I've had a lot of luck in the past that everything's got there right. But I'm the air is blue, blue. When I've got something awkward and that franken boxing thing, oh. oh man! I mean, no one comes near me when I've got to package something big. They all know the scarper. <laughs> Let me get on with it. Yeah. I just, it's so time consuming. I felt like I'm sure it's this Monday. It might have been this Monday. I probably had a rant on Insta later about it. But I spent, you know, like two thirds of the time on three items because it was big and it was franken. But if I'd have had the correct boxes ready as well, that would have helped. I get a load of good boxes, but then stuff sells. And I think, oh, I'll get more boxes before that sells. Something sells. And you're like, oh, my God, I need boxes. And I've got to, like, rip things apart. And, yeah, I don't know. I don't enjoy that. I, I really enjoy throwing something in a little poly mailer that's already for you. Just peel that little thing off and do that. And it's done. Yeah. Yeah, Nick does all of well, most of our packaging. But if I help him, I always say, I'm going to do the easy stuff. So I do all the media that I can just put in the jiffy bags. And yeah. <laughs> I do all my, my own clothing and just bring it into him. But anything breakable, I'm like, no, you, you deal with that. Because <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a bit of a boon, isn't it, from working with somebody that likes packaging. You can yeah, go off and He's so off. good at it as well. <laughs> what? He's so good at it. He's a bit of a whiz with a box. Well, he actually enjoys it, doesn't he? Yeah, I think he does. He's I enjoy it. Do you enjoy the packaging? Yeah, especially if it's a varied day. If I go and get my IKEA bag down out at Loft and I've got a uh, minifigure for a jiffy bag and a couple of pairs of trousers going in a bag and then I've got a big Sylvanian mm. house and then a few glass things and oh, it's, it's all varied a little bit. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's a good job that you can stay with me. You can package all my stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's good that we all like different things because then we all put different things on eBay, don't we? I'm just having a slight look at the chat. Um, it seems to be a lot about whether I'm going to swear or haven't sworn much. Thanks, Crispy. <laughs> um, Paul and Lou. No, Shell hasn't sworn. I might have sworn in the beginning. It's because you host it. No, you can swear all you like on here because it's not monetized. It doesn't get stopped, does it? <laughs> it still airs. Um, right, Karen, you're pretty up in the chat. Was there any? Were there any other questions? That we could... um, I haven't seen any. No, no. I think I noticed... all the questions I've seen. I noticed Kelly says she don't like listing, which is problematic. So <laughs> yeah, but... I'm, I'm with Kelly. That's my least favorite bit. I think I think the thing is, it depends on what, how how decent and professional you're being about your listings. Because I can imagine, Sue, that you are top notch in terms of like you have listed right. And in, in this Sylvanian house, there are three forks, there were two knives. No, so I'd just be like, it's everything you see in the pictures. <laughs> I do. It's everything you see in the pictures, and take lots of pictures of them all sat down having dinner and things. <laughs> Yeah, because I mean, I literally copy, we will wrap this up in a set, I know it's gone over um, to, I literally copy the title and stick that in the description, that's it. And then anything, you know, that stupid people need in the condition box, so it stands out, but I don't go into, I've seen some listings where I'm like, wow, that's really beyond the call of duty. Mm. Uh, yeah, mine are three lines if you're lucky. Mine yeah. is used, like if it's used item used and if it's got any flaws it'll be like say if it's still got a bit of bobbling that i've got off with some bobbling see photos it measures approximately pit to pit this length this and that is it that's copied and pasted from the open condition straight into my thing yeah i bet andrea you're quite thorough i am i'm meticulous <laughs> why it takes me so long 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I think we've all seen like listings where people have shared it and on Facebook or whatever and said, uh, or you've been looking for something and you see what that person's just sold that with the title white t-shirt and it's sold mm. 20 quid. <laughs> like what? Yeah. Yeah, I do find my higher value items and particularly things like men's suits, I will go into a lot more detail about stuff that's going to go for a decent amount of money because I don't want a return. And, but, you know, if it's going to go for 10 quid, then I'm sorry, my time. My time's too valuable. Yeah, I, I am kind of just get it on there. As long as somebody can find it and see it, then, you know, you've got a chance of it selling there. And the thing is, I don't know about you girls, but I find sometimes, you know, like if you go into a listing, if you're looking for something, when there is literally a book in the um oh, yeah. of it, that puts me off because I think what are you trying to hide? You know, when it's like it's telling them they're telling you their life story in this bit. Yeah. And it's, what are you trying to hide from me? You know, what are you hiding in all this that you expect me to read? <laughs> and I just can't be asked. I'm not reading small print, it's eBay, isn't it? It's like pictures place. Um my brother just snuck in on the camera and brought me a coffee. Oh, that's cute. Um, hi, Sam. Is that only just come in? Sorry, I'm late. We're about to go, I'm afraid. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Brilliant. Shows you what sort of day I have, doesn't it? I had cake. <laughs> well, it's a lot of chit chat about swearing. I'm not going to get drawn into it. Oh. Um, right, so is there anything anybody else would like to add before we go? No. Yeah. Unless anyone wants to think of any subject for next week. Oh, helpful. yes. Thanks, Karen. And uh, next week we are on Andrea's channel. We're all heading over that way. Yes. <laughs> Bit scared. <laughs> um, can I just say, uh, right, first of all, apologies for the 10 minute tobacco at the beginning. And also, at least I've done that. None of you can, like, cook it up as badly as that, so you're all fine now. Don't <laughs> wait till next week. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you can have Nick come and help you, so you're all good. Yeah, yeah. yeah so if anybody's, um, you know, got a particular subject, pop it over on Insta or Facebook or whatever, and uh, we can have a go at that. Yeah. I'll put up a post in the groups and on Instagram as well, so can comment on there. Fabulous. Cheers, everybody. Bye. 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 Yeah. Cheers. Bye.